So we've prepped this section for cutting and you'll see that I've drilled the pilot holes for all of the interior cuts. I've also drilled one pilot hole to do the exterior cuts. As I've mentioned previously, you don't want to be cutting in from the outside to cut out your work because that will create instability in your board. So when you have this intact and you're cutting out everything inside the board, you don't have to worry about bracing your work together. It will be stable within the material and you simply need to worry about bracing your work as you're cutting. So what we do uh, to begin is the interior cuts. We always do the interior cuts first because again, that relates directly to the stability of your piece. If I tried to cut this word out first, removing it from the material and then doing the inside cuts, I would likely break it nine, if not 10 times out of 10. Because it is such a fragile, small uh, font, these little sections would break if I tried to remove them and do the in interior cuts next. So that's one of the biggest mistakes very beginner or even slightly more than beginner scrolls will make is that they will do the outside cut first and then try to do the inside cut. So um, that's just one of the best tips is to do that. So I am going to go ahead and just do some live scrolling here to show you all the different um, ways that you can do cuts. Uh, again, I'm gonna try to stay as close to the edge of the line as possible, but give yourself some grace. If you're not directly beside the line or on the line, depending on your project, simply try to make it as smooth of a cut as possible because in the finishing process, when you're sanding, you're able to fix some of those minor mistakes as you go. So let's get started. You need to turn your saw on if you want to get started. Let's go. Okay, so I feel like that's a bit fast for the inside. I'm going to turn my speed down to about a six. I'm going to start on the edge here, come into that corner again, stop your blade from cutting, and spin and continue on along the line. Here. I'm actually stack cutting two um, quarter inch pieces of MDF here uh, simply because it's more bang for your buck. You get two <laughs> products at once. You can see here, and actually I'll take it off the saw. I did not stay exactly on the line. I made it a little bit thicker, but it's consistently the same thickness around. But you can see I have that little lip inside there um, where the material cut off. And I'm actually going to fix that right now because I can see it. Um, so I'm just gonna feed my blade back through there. Spin it around, add your tension, and I, I can see the little lip there, so I'm just going to clean it up um, before I continue on. So there you go, you can see I've cleaned that inside up there, that lip is no longer there and it's a fairly consistent cut all the way around. So I'm going to go through all the rest of the inside cuts before I go to the outside. Interior cuts provide a really great opportunity to practice those tight corners within your work. So you'll see that that's a really sharp corner inside this B here. So what I'm going to do is the out and back method to ensure that we keep that corner tight. So I'm going to come around one side, come to that point, I'm going to stop, pull my blade back out, and then come around the other side and meet at that point to make it extra sharp. I missed the line there a little bit, so before I pull my blade out to do the next cut, I'm going to go back over there to do a little bit of cleanup to make sure I have a nice smooth line. So again, release your tension, your blade clamp, and then you can go into the next corner. I will do the same thing in the larger cuts, and again, this is sometimes why it's better to feed from the top. I've just by habit always fed from the bottom. <laughs> There you go. So even for these bigger parts, I will still do that out and back. I'm going to take those corners and go in one side. 
So once you have completed all the inside cuts, you can go ahead and get started on the outside. For the outside cuts, I typically increase my speed so that I'm not forcing my project through because you can cut much faster on the outside edges. It's not as detailed as the interior intricate cuts. Um, you'll probably want to go a bit faster so that you're not forcing your project through the blade. So typically to find your starting point, you'll want to find uh, a straight-ish edge. If you don't have a straight edge, I always like to start at the point of a letter. Um, so if I didn't start here, I'd probably start maybe at the top of the B or in one of these lower corners, depending on what you're most comfortable with. So again, just to reiterate, the reason why we do these interior cuts first is because if we try to cut the word baby out first and then do these tiny little interior cuts, all of these very thin detail lines of that font would likely break when you're trying to do that. So it's very important to do your interior cuts first, then you move to the outside, all while keeping the entire project intact. So again, we're not cutting in from the outside edge of the project, we're drilling a pilot hole and cutting everything within the same piece. So let's get started. Again, my speed is almost top speed, 10 moves out of two, let's get going.
but that does come with practice. Stopping the blade mid-cutting becomes second nature if you practice it enough. So I can't reiterate, practice, practice, practice enough, because that is how scrolling will become second nature to you as well. stop it from cutting and show you something that can happen when you're cutting for an extended period of time. If I lower my tension and I loosen my blade, you can see that it can need to be rebolted every now and then. These bolts are holding in a pinless blade and your blade can start to slide out um, as you are cutting. So if you find that it's getting a lot of vibration, a good thing to do is stop cutting, readjust your blade clamps, reset your tension and start again. As you can see there, there's a lot less vibration because my blade was simply slipping. That's a very common issue with many scroll saws that have pinless blades because they are smooth and can start to slide with extended As you come to the end of the word, it's important to brace the lettering that's already cut out. If you don't, that lettering can start to pop out a little bit. Um, so I always like to keep my hands directly on what I've already cut, always keeping your fingertips clear of that blade. You come around the top and then finish off on my starting line. So there you go. Now that that word is cut out, I'll just pull the pattern off and you can pull your word out. So you can see it's a fairly smooth cut. I had to backtrack a few times um, in order to smooth out some of the bumps in the road. But next up, we'll be finishing sanding and painting. So you'll get to see how we'll clean this up so that it is ready for our finished project. Thank you.